reading philosophy is very difficult. And uh, it takes a tremendous amount of effort, um, I think. This book's really real well written, and uh, Russell is a great thinker and a clear thinker. But still, it can be quite confusing. Um, so reading philosophy is difficult, but, um, you know, the, the thing is that um, philosophy is about experience. It's about ordinary experience. It's about, it's about us and, and the world and our experience of the world. Um, and so whatever he's talking about here, Russell, it, it should be things that, that are familiar to us. And um, it may not be um, immediately uh, familiar in the sense that connecting up your own experience of the world and yourself with what Russell is talking about may not come uh, instantaneously. But at a certain point, you have to sort of stop reading, uh, look back, and then and, and take the knowledge of what you read and, and try to find a connection <laughs> with um, what you are familiar with in your experience uh, and, and think about it and test it out and ask yourself whether Russell is right and whether any philosopher is right whether whether they've made the right distinctions whether they've accurately described the elements of experience and, 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 and the way the world appears to us the, the way that, that we think of ourselves etc. We come to this very difficult distinction uh, in this very difficult chapter between knowledge by acquaintance and knowledge by description. And although we'll go through it in detail, the most important thing is to see what he's talking about, you know, to understand what he's talking about. And that really involves applying it to your own experience, uh, using your own experience as a way of understanding it. It's incredibly important in philosophy, not just to read the text carefully, which of course you have to do, but also to to put it into your own words, uh, because that is a step towards seeing the reality of it. That is, it's not just words on a page, not some incredibly abstract discussion, which seems to be very technical in nature and and is confusing, etc. But to get to the point where you actually can say, well, yes, he's talking about this element of my experience, or something like that. I think that when we're thinking about the distinction that he's making between knowledge by acquaintance and knowledge uh, from uh, knowledge from description knowledge by description looking at a, uh, a remark that he makes towards the beginning of the chapter might be helpful he says knowledge of things when it is of the kind we call knowledge by acquaintance is essentially simpler than any knowledge of truths and logically independent of knowledge of truths. It's that simpler that I'd like to, to emphasize here. Knowledge by acquaintance is a simple knowledge. Um, look at any object in your immediate surroundings right now, uh, anything at all. Um, I guess we could look at something together. We could look at this pen. Um, when I look at the pen, or what I take to be the pen, I notice its color. Uh, and I, if I attend to its color, what would I say that I'm seeing? I'm, I'm seeing blue. I'm seeing a blue color, or I'm seeing blueness, or I'm having a sensation of blue. That experience, that direct experience of the sense datum blue, is the kind of thing that Russell is talking about when he talks about knowledge uh, by acquaintance. It's simple knowledge. For instance, how would you describe that blue? I mean, we could say it's a light blue or it's a dark blue or something, but as Russell says, such statements, though they make me know truths about the color, do not make me know the color itself any better than I did before. That is, my knowledge of that color is simple. That is, it's really indescribable in the sense that any attempt to describe the experience will somehow or another fall short of the knowledge that I gained by the direct experience itself of the color, an acquaintance with the color. In a certain sense, um, my experience of the color is non-linguistic, that is, it's direct, it's immediate. 
Uh, and any attempt to describe it will be building upon that direct experience rather than making that direct experience any clearer. Uh, you might say that my experience of, of a color is uh, like my experience of any of my so-called sense data. It's a rather unique kind of knowledge in the sense that, well, it's indescribable. For instance, if you're looking at a physical object in your environment and there's someone else with you, and you say to them, well, that fire hydrant over there is red. And they said, well, why do you think it's red? What would you say? Um, I mean, compare that to your other sort of claims you make about the world. You could say to your friend, uh, well, um, Barack Obama is President of the United States in 2012. And they could say, well, why do you think that? And you could point to evidence. You could say, well, because he was elected by the Electoral Congress, had the majority of the votes. Um, because he was sworn in and took the oath of office. And you could point to all sorts of evidence that Barack Obama uh, was President of the United States. And that would be well, if you say that you know that he's the President of the United States, that would be an example of knowledge by description. Whereas, if you compare that with your knowledge that the fire hydrant is red, uh, what could you say to your friend to prove that it's red? In fact, what would you do? Because there's really nothing you could say. You would say, well, look. And, and if they looked and had an experience similar to you, then they would say that it's red, too. That is, the experience of the color of something is something that we can have uh, by acquaintance. Uh, the, the acquaintance, the direct, immediate experience of the color, as opposed to the more complex, less simple knowledge that this man, Barack Obama, is currently President of the United States, which is not something that we know by acquaintance. It's something that we know by description. So the important thing to keep in mind here is that Russell is making a distinction between different ways in which we know things, by acquaintance and by description. And that w what we should be able to do to, f to really understand w what's going on in this chapter is to be able to find examples of each kind of knowing in our own experience. When we know things by acquaintance, it seems to me he's saying we know things uh, directly and simply. And when we know things by acquaintance, we know things all at once. That is, there's no complexity or parts to our knowledge of a thing. It, it comes all at once or it doesn't come at all. Uh, whereas our knowledge of things can be complex. For instance, my knowledge of Barack Obama is both indirect uh, and complex. That is, I know many things about him. I know that he was born in the state of Hawaii. I know that he was a law professor at the University of Chicago, uh, as well as knowing that he's currently president of the United States. Um, but what do I, when I think about my knowledge of a particular color, when I'm having a color sensation, when a color is given to me an experience, red or blue or orange, whatever it is, it's not complex. It's, it's, it, it's all at once. That is, um, my, my knowledge is, um, well, to use a term that Russell uses earlier in a different context, my knowledge of the color is primitive, simple, basic. Uh, I can prove to you that Barack Obama is president. I can't prove to you that the color of the fire hydrant is red. All I can ask you to do is to look for yourself, and you either agree or disagree. So we'll take a look at the the chapter in some detail, taking a close look at the text, but I wanted to start off by suggesting some of these some of these things and, and really maybe it's just an, as an example of what I hope that you're, you'll be doing all along when you read this book is to, to think about how uh, wh what Russell is saying uh, uh, applies in, in your own experience.